Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. My name is Naushad Amin and I simply consider myself as a solar energy enthusiast. First and foremost, I'd like to convey my gratitude to Allah Almighty for giving me the chance to come over here today safe and sound to, prov to give a lecture on the title called Solar Green Earth. My topic is about energy and environment dilemma with some hope on renewable energy resources, mostly solar energy, for our carbon-free future generation. Before I start, I am sharing some of the photos that I have been taken, not as good as our Akash Bhai. It is to give me some soothness from time to time with our beautiful Earth. We mankind are the blessed generation or generous best blessed species of the creation of Allah Almighty to coexist with others on this only livable planet of the universe. But unfortunately, our egoistic mentality has so far pushed us to the verge of our existence in the human history. Just take an example of this our ego or egoistic idea. It is pity that since the beginning of our journey, we have become very lavish and selfish in utilizing the, the natural resources. And now we are facing the extinction of many resources like fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas. And these fossil fuels are creating problem to our environment as well, as we see. And we blame a lot of calamities, a lot of disasters for this fossil fuel usage. As you see here, some of the calamities I'm showing from our recent time. The most recent one happened in Dhaka, I think a couple of, year, a couple of days ago, that you remember, just only two hours of rain created huge water logging in Dhaka, bringing people's life in complete stalemate. And you can see some of the other natural calamities happened in recently in Hawaii or a couple of years ago in Australia, and also regular flood in now in mid, um, uh, Europe or in flash flood in Libya, as you can see here. And we always blame global warming for these natural disasters. But honestly, to me, it is not the natural calamity, it is man-made, or at least the consequences of our voracious behavior in terms of energy usage. I'm sharing the long-term global warming glimpse from, taken from the NASA and NOAA, who are showing not sure, okay, who are showing the trend, how our, this world is getting warmer or hotter over the past 150 years. We are now 0.89 degrees centigrade warmer or hotter than the baseline period of 1950 to 1981 set by NASA. It may seem trivial, but it is not. Moreover, the atmospheric carbon dioxide is, is now crossing over 400 ppm level for the first time in human history, causing huge disaster to our greenhouse gas emissions, which trigger the global warming. So what is global warming? How it is so disastrous or how it is so alarming to us? In fact, a stern report on global warming economics predicts that if the temperature rises over 4 degrees centigrade, we will see complete disaster by melting the icebergs of both North and South Poles, rising the seabed by 7 meter high, drowning many big cities like London, New York, forget about our low-lying Bangladesh or Maldives. So is there any way out or prob so solution to these problems? Yes, we always have great minds from time to time as saviors. Before entering to this century, in 1996, over 2,500 futurist scholars, policymakers, Business planners gathered 
for nearly almost three years from 50 countries. And they sorted that there are 15 global challenges which we might face in the coming millennium. And you can see the first one is the climate change. And the 13th one is about the energy crisis, which is mainly responsible by our extensive use of fossil fuels. After two decades, in 2015, in the United Nations General Assembly, we found that policymakers against world leaders, they tried to set up their goals, or which is called Sustainable Development Goals. Sustainable Development Goals are the blueprint for a better and more sustainable future for all. In fact, these Sustainable Development Goals are the outcomes of those 15 challenges that we triggered before entering this millennium. Again, we see there are two issues, main issues, on climate change and energy usage, which we call couple challenges for mankind. Later that year, in Paris at COP21, nearly 200 countries tried to strike the first climate deal to slash the carbon dioxide emission by setting some time limits. In fact, it is the good news for us, great optimism for mankind. There, the term renewable energy popped up as the main refuge to tackle these issues. What is renewable energy? In fact, renewable energy is the energy that comes from the nature, continually replenished or recharged without paying a single cent. It is safe to use, it is clean, and it is abundant. Like sunlights, wave, tide, the geothermal heat, etc. Since then, many countries are using renewable energies like this, as you can see. And it is found that in recent years, we are using over 25% of the consumption from renewable resources, which is also a good, good thing. Among the renewable energy resources, the most prominent one is the solar photovoltaic, photovoltaic technology, which simply converts sunlight into electricity with, with a magical device called solar cell that you can see in the middle, a panel. By simply facing to the sun or any kind of direct or indirect sunlight, we can convert sunlight or any kind of light into electricity silently and without producing any greenhouse gas emission. Now the question is, do we have the input abundantly? Yes, as you can see, most of the countries of the world are blessed with sunlight, and it is said that we are getting over 10,000 times more sunlight than we need for our energy usage. The question is, or the thing is, whether how we can convert into a very nice way of energy, which is electricity. Now let me take you a journey on the inception or the beginning of this magical technology called solar cell. It was invented back in 1956 by some scientists of Bell Labs, and since then, tremendous efforts and some historical events like oil shock in the 70s really saw or pushed this development. The technology has seen maturity nowadays. Now the efficiency is no more 6%. It is over 25% for some big scale and very small scale, it is over 46%. Now let me show you the evolution of this technology. This calculator is purchased by me back in 1991 when I started my journey in Japan, when I started my bachelor's degree, in fact. You can see my name in three different languages. This calculator is equipped with very small scale solar cell in, as we call, milliwatt capacity which still I carry and still it works even after 30 years. The evolution happened tremendously. Now we can see these solar panels much bigger than human size in terms of capacity as well, which is 650 or 600 uh, watt. Solar panels are commercially available in different kinds of shapes so that you can use it for different kinds of purposes. Now let me take you a journey on the adoption of solar energy in our daily life. As the picture says, a thousand words, in fact. It, in fact, 
drastically reduce the burden of humankind by changing simply by taking off the diesel generator from a stout man, giving a smarter makeshift hat of solar panels, which recharges the same small gadgets called mobile phones. Solar panels are helping rural electrification or pumping the underground water in many countries. Not only that, we can see in the most developed countries like Japan how a very traditional city is transformed with the solar energy with various kinds of various shapes of solar panels on their rooftop. Many modern cities are adopting solar panels as integrated building materials as you can, as you can see in this picture. We cannot differentiate between the solar panel or their roof anymore. Building facades are using solar panels as their electricity producers. Many big giant companies are putting solar panels on their rooftop to be self-sufficient in electricity generation, as you can see here. Not only that, those who have land problem, always you have land problem for cultivation of something, we can put solar panels on top of their agricultural producers or something, as you can see, which is called agrivoltaics. This is the picture from Bangladesh, from Mitapukur, where unknowingly they put solar panels and still the paddy or the, the rice is growing beneath the shade of these solar panels, as you can see here. Solar panels are now being used on water beds like ponds, lakes, or even seas, as you can see. So, I think by now you will agree that solar panels are ubiquitous and versatile. That means it can be used anywhere, everywhere, for any kind of electrical needs. Let me take you to a journey of my own story. Since I began this journey on solar cells to tackle the, this so-called climate change or global warming or energy problem, since 1996, I'm working on solar cell research as well as some product development, as you can see here. There are small gadget chargers, like cell phone chargers. There are laptop chargers. There are hats for the farmers so that they can enlight their houses in the evening. There are water purifier. There are makeshift car, solar car. There are fully converted solar car. There are solar easy bike, solar drone, and solar smart home on the top side. Just taking an example of this solar water purifier. In flood or any kind of natural disaster, this small gadget can be used or can, be, uh, or can produce 1,000 liters of pure drinking water with the help of solar energy and with some option of charging the cell phones or other, other gadgets. It's an emergency purpose tool. The second one, any kind of easy bike that we see nowadays here in Bangladesh or any kind of electrical vehicle can be converted within just two or three hours to a solar easy bike to reduce the dependency of the fossil fuels in our country, as you can see here. I have also experienced to join this Shell Eco Marathon in 2012 with our urban concept solar car, where the car will be fully run, running by the solar energy and which opened up our, in fact, eyes to this reality. Nowadays, you can see a lot of solar cars around the world being developed as prototypes. Recently, a group in Australia has declared that their car can run solely by solar energy for near, near about 800 kilometers with that single charge. Now you might think that solar energy is only suitable for small applications. In fact, it is not. Solar Energy products dropped so drastically in the last couple of years that we now can dream making some big scale power plants as same as nuclear power plants. Dear all, yes, we made it possible. We made nuclear scale solar energy power plants. The one, the biggest one is in our neighboring country, India, which has 2,245 megawatt capacity, and it produces over 10 gigawatt hour of energy in a day, completely free of fuel cost. 
The second one is in China, which is also a nuclear scale solar power plant, having the capacity of 2,200 megawatt. Third one is in India again. The price of solar dropped so drastically that IEA declared so electricity from the solar energy the cheapest in July 2020. The, glo the global solar energy capacity is now over 1,000 gigawatt, and it is producing over 1,300 terawatt hour of energy, avoiding emissions over 1,137 million tons of carbon dioxide. How much area is needed to meet the human demand or our demand? It is found from a German study that only 250 times 250 kilometers square area in Saharan desert of Algeria is well enough to mitigate or to cover the electricity demand of the whole world. Let me show my own inventions or innovation where I converted my small car into a semi-solar car. As you can see here, which produces four times more energy than my commuter needs. My, our own home in Malaysia, I was living in Malaysia for the last in nearly 18 years, so it's now equipped with solar panels, affordable solar panels, with a return on investment period of six years, and I can pay within three years. So all this is happening because of the incentives given by the government, sensible government. Some of the data shows I'm producing over 500 kilowatt hour of energy in one month, and which slashes the electricity bill to one sixth of the regular electricity bill that before the solar system was installed. Now let me take you to the journey uh, on a bigger, bigger perspective. A study finds that in 139 countries, we can be completely renewable energy equipped country for our energy need by the year 2050 and solar will take the 50% share. Ladies and gentlemen, our earth is a natural sink of carbon dioxide, but we are now producing four times more than it can really absorb. So the only thing is we can use solar energy more or any kind of renewable energy to make it more carbon neutral, to make, it, make, it, make, make this our world a livable one for our future generation. So in COP21, as we promised, that we will reduce the temperature rise up to 2 degrees centigrade. It is possible, as found from another study, that if we install another 4,800 gigawatt of energy by solar energy by, the, by another 10 years, we can easily achieve this target. With that, I'd like to conclude, but with this takeaway or take-home message that says, let's accomplish a mission of solar green earth by adopting more solar energy now into our daily life to make this world a sustainable one for our future generations. Thank you so much for your kind attention.